It's a ruling we saw coming for weeks, but that didn't soften the blow of the Supreme Court's 6-3 decision to overturn Roe v. Wade for the 60% of Americans who support abortion access. I'm angry. I'm fired up. The fight is not over. Protesters have been on the streets outside the Supreme Court and across the country for days, including in Mississippi, where the Supreme Court case originated and is one of nearly a dozen states that now ban or severely limit abortion so far. And here in Massachusetts, where abortion is legal up to 24 weeks of pregnancy and later, if necessary, to protect the mother's life and health or because of a lethal fetal abnormality. State lawmakers are also looking at ways to expand abortion protection and access before they break for the summer. And immediately after the court's ruling came down, Governor Charlie Baker signed an executive order aiming to protect out-of-state patients and the abortion providers who help them from lawsuits. I'm joined by Dr. Jennifer Childs Roshak, a physician and the president and CEO of the Planned Parenthood League of Massachusetts. So good to see you. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. So the conventional wisdom is really bad news for women in much of America, but here in Massachusetts, they are protected. Is that your analysis so far? Yes, that's correct. Here in Massachusetts, um, we have we have put into place a lot of protections that make a difference for, for women who live here in Massachusetts or uh, can get to Massachusetts for care. Let's stay in, in Massachusetts for a minute, and then we'll get to what the feds may or may not do on the good or bad side further than the Supreme Court. Is there more the state should be doing? I touched on it a second ago, but I should maybe put it, what should the state be doing to provide even greater protection for the women who are here? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, the uh, the governor's executive order was fantastic. You know, the timing of that was, um, was really incredibly important um, and critical to, to providing care here in Massachusetts in this very uncertain environment. So I think, you know, a very important next step would be codifying the elements of the executive order and, and potentially a couple other things as well um, to make sure that uh, it's not just a temporary um, protection, but it's, it's something that lasts throughout uh, as long as we need it, you know, in the, into the future as well. Regardless of who the governor was. But let me just be clear about the Baker thing. I, I was right a minute ago, was I not, that it essentially prote protects in-state providers who uh, provide some uh, reproductive health care to a woman who comes here from out of state. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. And does it do anything else, or is that the extent of it? Well, so it, it protects the patients as they come to Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, it protects providers on multiple levels. So extradition to um, another state, for example, like a Texas uh, or state with a bounty law. Um, mm -hmm. And it also protects uh, uh, providers' licenses as well. So, You know, doctor, one of the things that I never understand, even though I used to lobby and I use the term loosely on Beacon Hill, you say the next step is to codify this. Uh, I, one, I don't understand, and this is not your problem, why legislators think it's important to go home for six months when there's important business to do. I won't put that on you. But assuming they can stick around for an extra week, why can't they codify this right now before they go again on this multi-month vacation, uh, well, theoretically, to prepare for re-election? Why can't they do this now to assure the women uh, uh, from out of state who are contemplating come here that they'll have full protection? Well, so um, I, I think they probably could do it uh, either, you know, now or within the next, um, you know, handful of of days. Um, you know, I think the uh, I would say the legislature has been extremely supportive, um, mm -hmm. and the decision just happened on Friday. So while mm -hmm. we knew that it was going to happen, I could certainly appreciate how folks. Um, we're willing to do some proactive um, things in yeah. the legislature, but really wanted to see how things shook out. So I think there's time. And I think there's also been some um, very clear support that they've signaled already right, around right. things like the budget, et cetera. So I hope there's, uh, there's that. I mean, there are a few million dollars they're putting in the budget from what I understand to do what exactly, doctor? So my understanding from the Senate side is that there's $2 million allocated uh, in the budget um, to provide more funding for um, abortion funds for folks who need help um, mm -hmm. uh, affording abortion care, and then also for things connected to providing care, security, and some of the other patient right. access things that so, are really important. 
Terrific. And again, that's not law yet, but it's in one uh, chamber's right. budget, so hopefully it does become law. Can we go to D.C. for a minute? Uh, former federal judge Nancy Gardner is going to be with me tomorrow night, and she has said repeatedly on the radio that while she not only believes there's statutory protection under the Roe Act that passed recently, but she believes that a case that her husband and she did years and years ago, he was the legal director for the ACLU of Massachusetts, provides constitutional protection for right to abortion. However, and there's a big however, she also believes if the Republicans take control of Congress and there's a Republican president to sign whatever they do come 2025, that if they pass legislation saying that a fetus is a person, all the protections that exist statutorily and in the Constitution in Massachusetts would evaporate. Do you agree with that analysis? Well, so uh, I'm not a lawyer, That's and okay. I think if I think if um, Judge Gertner says it, then um, then I believe it to be true. Um, she's a certain, certainly a exceptionally um, smart and talented and experienced judge. I, I do think, though, one of the critical things that um, and this is a you know it's it's not it's not the typical talking point a, a talking point for I think a healthcare person, but you know the the uh, the Equal Rights Amendment is one way to make sure that there's a constitutional protection mm -hmm. for for women in America. And you know, I think I think that's also something that um, that is probably worth exploring uh, in a more in a more um, you know deeper way. I'm so glad you brought that up very briefly for people who are watching and saying the Equal Rights Amendment, didn't that die? The it would be in the Constitution if the archivist, an unelected official, uh, decided that what some consider, anti-ERA people, consider to be, quote, late state votes were not, in fact, late. It'd be embodied in the Constitution, and I'm so glad you brought it up. The protection you're talking about would be codified. You know, uh, uh, some are, maybe this is just putting hope ahead of reality, both, uh, uh, both Senator Collins from uh, Maine and Senator Manchin from West Virginia. Senator Collins, who at least says she's pro-choice, and Senator Manchin, who while he says he is anti-choice, he does not, he believes that Roe was and should be the law of the land. Is there any pressure being put on by people like you and your national leaders to urge them to join Demo other Democrats, well, Ra Collins is not a Democrat, but Manchin and Collins to join the majority of Democrats to carve out a piece, uh, a, a provision in the filibuster that would allow the codification of Roe in federal le legislation to happen. Is that being discussed? Yeah, you know that's a great um, that's a great question. You know, I would say yes is probably the short answer. I assume so, but you know, I am I'm I'm mostly focused here on Massachusetts. Um, what I do know is that you know this this is a it's a horrendous decision um, that has come down with with huge impact. And I think any angle, you know, whether it's looking at um, the politicization of the Supreme Court, whether it's looking at, um, you know, uh, justices and their ethics, whether it's looking at way the Women's Health Protection Act, you know, mm -hmm. I think there are multiple ways um, to kind of uh, address address the get to the solution. And I think we need to do it that way. I think we there's not one solution that fits all. And one thing we could add to your list, I assume you'd agree, is for the FDA to decide. That medic the pills for medication abortions could be over the counter, which would make life much easier for women who are getting the short end of things as a result of this ruling. Correct? Well, I think you know any any way we can reduce barriers to care. So whether it's yeah. emergency contraception over the counter, birth control over the counter, um, you know, I think um, I think way, there are multiple ways to do that, and even just the current lifting of the requirement to prescribe medication, abortion medications you know, in a health center, like yeah. that that alone, being able to mail across state lines, like those sorts of things um, are, are really critically important. Um, and all of that can be done, you know, under the under the um, support of a physician or pr provider Honestly. as well, which, which also is really important. For Doctor, one last thing for you, a political question, is, you know, the conventional wisdom to which I subscribe is people on the other side of issues like this and guns are far better at voting on that issue than people like you. I mean, generically, I don't mean you in particular. Do you see this as the motivator that most supporters of reproductive freedom suggest it could be come midterm elections? 
I think it'll be a motivator. I mean, what, 51% of the population uh, in the United States is, is female and, um, and can get pregnant and, um, you know, uh, at some point in their lives. And, and I think, I think there's, um, you know, any, anything in America that impinges on individual freedom, I think does strike a chord. And, um, you know, we can talk about the second amendment, you know, till we're blue in the face, but, you know, being able to decide when or whether to be a parent, having, mm -hmm. um, autonomy over your own body, um, being able to make your own healthcare decisions, that is liberty. And that is what I think will really strike a, a chord with folks. And I, I certainly hope, um, I think it'll get folks, you know, my generation, your generation mm -hmm. out to vote. I think it'll get the young people out to vote. Um, so I, I do think we will see some significant impact. The one, uh, the the, and I really hope you're right, but the one cautionary note is uh, a huge percentage of white women voted for a candidate in 2016 who said his litmus test for Supreme Court justices was that they be anti-choice, or as he called it, pro-life. So hopefully people, men, women, everybody is awakened to the reality. Doctor, I really appreciate your time. Lots of luck with your work. Thank you. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a great evening. You too.